narrow boundaries. After spying on journalists, foreign dignitaries, and the average Joe, it has finally now come to light that Obama and company have been spying on Congress itself. Well, I'm appalled by when we listen in on foreigners' conversation when they're talking to Americans. We're scooping up tens of thousands of conversations of Americans. This is a real problem because it's a real invasion of our privacy. At this point, it wouldn't surprise anyone if funeral arrangements for the Fourth Amendment were announced within the next few days. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. As the communications of allies such as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu were monitored, so were their interactions with U.S. members of Congress, as well as American private interest groups, with links to the foreign leaders. One unnamed U.S. official revealed to the Wall Street Journal that the practice raised fears. Oh, sh! The executive branch would be accused of spying on Congress. The Obama administration were wary of this and so simply allowed the NSA to decide what to share without making any specific requests. We didn't say do it, a senior U.S. official said. We didn't say don't do it. You can see how it would stifle speech if you're going to eavesdrop on congressmen and that it might stifle what they say or who they communicate with. We absolutely need more controls on the NSA and more controls on our intelligence agencies. Forget controls, Senator Paul. We need heads to roll. And where is the president during this unprecedented breach of the Constitution? If you hadn't noticed, President Obama is down in Hawaii on an extended two-plus-week vacation that is costing taxpayers no less than $470,000 per day. Once Obama finally leaves office, if he does, he will have spent nearly $70 million of taxpayer money on just seven Hawaiian vacations alone. The last time I checked, the president's annual salary was $400,000 per year, with a $50,000 annual expense account and $19,000 for entertainment. When did anybody agree to fund $70 million of taxpayer money so that our thief in chief could live like a billionaire and focus on the new Star Wars film while putting his toes in the sand and simultaneously destroying our founding principles? Early this morning, a House panel hastily announced it had opened an investigation into the overreaching intelligence collection of Congress. Can you hear that sound? That's the sound of Tricky Dick rolling in his grave. I have never profited never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. John Bound for InfoWars.com. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. We've been talking today about the year in review. One of the hot topics, Leanne, is that of Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's very interesting how Bill Cosby can be accused of all these things over decades. And it's an international news story pretty much overnight. Now, we just saw him do the perp walk, and they've taken him into custody. He's made bail now. But you think about somebody like Bill Clinton, who's been doing these or been accused of the same things Bill Cosby has for decades on end. And when you bring it up that he's done these things or at least been accused of them, oh, you're a sexist, you're attacking Hillary, you're bringing this up just for political points. Right, exactly. It's just a political talking point. Meanwhile, we've seen for years them using the war on women and Republicans hate women uh, as their talking point to go after the Republican Party. And so then when you want to throw it back in their face, then, of course, you're just politicizing something that, you know, really wasn't a big deal. Mind your own business. Bill and Hillary worked it out in their own relationship. Why should the country be concerned about it? And we're going to talk about that right now of why the country should be concerned about it, why it is fair game uh, with these sexual allegations against Bill Clinton. And they're not even allegations. I mean, he has admitted to affairs um, and also had to pay out uh, Paula Jones. So, you know, this is someone that is a serial predator, just like Bill Cosby. But you're not hearing about that on the mainstream media. What you are hearing about is Bill Cosby. And of course, it's because he did have to, you know, go do the perp walk. So he was appearing in court today to face these sexual assault charges stemming from um, a 2004 incident with Andrea Constand. Uh, so he has had to post a million dollars bail. He was forced to hand over his passport, but he hasn't entered a plea deal uh, just yet. Um, and now Constan claims that Cosby gave her three blue pills with wine one night at his mansion, and then he sexually molested her. The charge against him is punishable by five to 10 years behind bars, a $25,000 fine. Now she's just one of more than 50 women who have come forward Obviously, some of those people may or may not be true, but more than 50 women have come forward in the past year alone claiming to be victims of I mean, that they were drugged and sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby. Now, Breitbart today decided to repost one of their articles from last year uh, where they were pointing out how the media hunts Bill Cosby, but then they celebrate Bill Clinton. Yes. And they, we, they have really been doing that in these past couple of weeks, of course, because Donald Trump 
as soon as Hillary tried to pull out that gender card and sexism, sexism card, he was like, really? Don't go there. And so, you know, that's one thing I got to give Trump credit, love him or hate him. He does not back down. And I'm actually enjoying watching him rattle the establishment a little bit. But so now Breitbart is going back and, and they're pointing out now here, I think because it was a very racially inflamed last year, they were kind of taking the case where you see how the media goes after Herman Cain um, or also the uh, who was a Supreme Court justice, Clarence Thomas, of course. So they went after these two black men and, and Bill Cosby as well. Meanwhile, Bill Clinton is allowed to skate free. Mm -hmm. But of course, we've seen them go after like John Edwards and the, the whole Wienergate thing. So, yes. you know, I don't think that's totally fair. But they they point out how this is President Bill Clinton all of these women against him that he was accused of rape by multiple women, one of them stemming back as far as what, 1969. Okay, this is where one of the first uh, alleged incidents falls back. Um, but he was forced to settle a lawsuit. And his first, one of the first accusers that came forward, Juanita Broderick, she, she wasn't like these Cosby accusers. She didn't even want to be put out in the media. She didn't even want to have any kind of financial lawsuit or anything. She was a reluctant witness, mm -hmm. but they forced her to testify. But so the media went out of their way to circle the wagons around the Clintons and discredit her. They called her a liar, all of this stuff. So the, where was Hillary Clinton? She's trying to run her whole campaign on, we need to believe the victims of sexual violence and we believe that your voice should be heard. She actually made a video saying that. When she stands accused of defaming, Threatening these women and yeah, we saw that we saw that video uh, she was at some type of uh, Q&A session and she's up to talking about all the rights of the victims and somebody says Well, what about the people that have accused your husband? She was like, well, those people those women been disproved Yeah, and once you disbelieve them and, it, and she just sat there like frozen in space of like, oh goodness Someone finally asked me the question. I thought we had screened all of the questioners <laughs> here. How'd she slip in? Yeah, that was a really I, I don't know who that person was but that was some awesome citizen journalism there. But yeah, let's take a look. So these are just some of the sexual stories and allegations besides the famous Monica Lewinsky scandal, you know, where Bill Clinton uh, went after his former intern, who was like 21 at the time. Mm -hmm. So we have Eileen Wellstone, I, I mentioned she claimed that he raped her in 1969. Juanita Broderick claimed he raped her in 1978. Jennifer Flowers, claimed to be his mistress for 12 years. Kathleen Wiley, uh, she was a former White House aide. She claimed he's, Clinton sexually assaulted her in 1993. And then, of course, Paula Jones sued him for sexual harassment in 94. The lawsuit was dropped um, after there was an $850,000 out-of-court settlement. And I do believe that was where he lied under oath and that was where he was impeached. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so even with all of that, the DNC is still coming out and saying, if you want to come after Bill Clinton, do so at your own peril. This is actually Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Those words came out of her mouth. She said, polls show that if he were to run for re-election, he'd be elected right now. He's one of the most revered people in politics and men in the world. Uh, yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, pump the brakes on that. Right. I, don't, I don't know too many people, little boys who want to grow up and be like Bill Clinton. Right. Well, so that's what she's basically saying. It's okay to sexually assault people and still be revered in the Democratic Party as long and as it, you're Bill hold Clinton. Hold on. Let me, let me inter interject here, Leanne, because we see uh, the rape or the sexual assault thing is such a hot topic on college campuses. Rape culture. Everywhere you hear, you know, rape culture, you know, what should we have campus carrier not to stop these rapists? Should we do this or that to stop the rapists? Right. It's such a big issue, but if you dare talk about somebody who's been accused of things or had settlements about it, uh, uh, Miss Flowers is somebody Larry Nichols talked to us about. If you have all these things going on and it's a, a president <laughs> of the United States, right. nobody wants to touch it, you can't touch it. No, it's completely off limits. And we've seen the media do this, uh, of course, when Obama was running, there were so many topics that were completely off limits. You weren't allowed to bring it up because he needed to be elected. Mm -hmm. And the same thing's happening now with Hillary Clinton. I pointed this out uh, earlier uh, earlier this week, CNN actually had a panel, it was all women on the panel, and the lady opened the panel with, is Bill Clinton sexist or does he simply like women? 
So where is the rape culture? Where is the rallying around women accusers? He just likes women, Jakari. It's, you know what I mean? He got, took it a little too far because he just likes women too much. I mean, it's Well, insane. I mean, I saw, I saw that clip a little bit before we got on there, and I was really kind of surprised to see a bunch of women take that angle. He just, he just really likes women yeah. so much that he forces himself upon them. Right, and this is Hillary Clinton who's just running this whole campaign of how it's